President Biden heads to Baltimore today to speak with state and local officials after last week's deadly bridge collapse. So Mark Meredith joins us from the White House with the details on the short trip and some other uh, initiatives the administration is working on. Hey, Mark. Brian, good morning to you. There is a lot of news to get to this morning, including later today where President Biden will be getting an aerial tour of the damage left behind from that Baltimore bridge collapse. Of course, this was a deadly accident, but there are also growing concerns about the economic impact it's having all across the mid-Atlantic. We know that the president will be in Baltimore for a few hours to not only see what the damage was, but also meet with those impacted. The federal government, he says, should cover the entire cost to replace the Francis Scott Key Bridge, but we don't know how much money that's going to cost or how much additional economic economic aid may be needed to assist businesses struggling with this disruption. Late Thursday, the president was also all smiles as he marked Greek Independence Day here at the White House. I had a very close relationship with the Greek American community, for real. I am Joe Bidenopoulos. While the president was all smiles there with the uh, Greek Independence Day, we know he's going to be on the road next week in Wisconsin. The Wall Street Journal reports this morning while he's there, the president is going to outline a new large scale effort to forgive student loan debt. You'll remember the first attempt was struck down by the Supreme Court. The journal reports that the president's advisors hope to use the rules to begin canceling waves of student debt in the run up to the November election. But the exact timing of the effort will depend on how quickly they can finalize regulations. Vice President Kamala Harris, she she was on the campaign trail yesterday. She was in the Tar Heel state of North Carolina, telling a crowd they should be thankful for recent efforts to address climate change. But think about it. Soon, 30,000 more families will have the funds they need to replace drafty windows and install better insulation to keep their homes warm in the winter and cool in the summer. And here in North Carolina, to help you lower that monthly Duke energy bill. You're welcome. The vice president talking about the efforts to address climate change. But one of the big questions still of this year is going to be where gas prices will go. We're at 352 an average a, a gallon right now in the country. And there's a lot of talk about the summer driving season. We've seen prices go up over the last several months. The big question, what will we see for this summer? Remember, it wasn't that long ago, two years ago in summer of 22, that we saw $5 a gallon gas. Guys, back to you. It's so interesting, Mark. We Yesterday, the vice that. president. The vice president said the same thing the president said. When asked, are you trailing in the polls? She said no. What, well, how do they expect? Do they just want us to forget about the numbers? Well, it's so interesting because obviously when you do hear the president or the vice president get those questions about what about the polls that show you trailing former President Trump, what does that mean? And you're right. They'll say, well, we have different polling. And they may have internal polling which shows something different as opposed to what you get from, say, USA Today or Fox or NBC, any of the other places that do polling. But when you do talk about these polls, you have to say, is one an outlier or are we seeing a general trend? We talked a lot this week, Brian, about the Wall Street Journal poll, which showed the seven swing states and Biden losing to Trump in six of seven within the margin of error. So you're right. They're going to keep facing these headlines. What do the polls say? And then again, I think the big X factor is going to be the economy still. And as I just talked about with gas prices, what we're talking about, student loan forgiveness, uh, what that all mean will certainly have a major impact on those polls as well. Absolutely. Well, they did the, get a good Pennsylvania poll. And the, the Supreme Court, Mark, already said the yeah. Biden administration couldn't do it. So I don't, I don't get what they're on doing. The student loans. Yeah, Steve, this is a good point. I think we are going to hear a lot more about this on Monday. We've got some uh, lines out to the White House to get a sense of what it is. But the Journal even says in their report this morning that these are just going to be kind of broad outlines of what the White House hopes to do and that it's still something that they're going to have to go through regulatory process. I think the Journal was alluding that the White House is going to say, instead of just forgiving everybody that has $10,000 worth of student loans, we're going to find that maybe you uh, are a certain income cap. Maybe you have been, not been paying for the past 20 years. So there may be more conditions as opposed to just kind of a broad stroke of student loan forgiveness. Right. But it Would, looks like this will be coming back And up. they're not supposed to be able to do it, and they keep doing that. Uh, thanks, thanks, Mark. Mark. Thank How you, convenient Mark. during an election year that all of a it's sudden it's just use, it's usurp a the courts and decide they're going to do it anyway. About time to buy some votes. Mm -hmm. How about car, how about car loans? Yeah. Well, yeah. speaking of the election, this is what a lot of you are worried about. Yeah. How far your dollar will take you nowadays. Bread and butter issues, exactly. kitchen table stuff. Exactly. The 99 cent stores, they're closing 371 stores in Arizona, California, Nevada, and Texas because they just can't afford to keep up uh, with all these stores. They said the reasons, COVID, the rising levels of shrinking, which means shoplifting, employee theft, fraud, administrative errors, and inflation. Right. Now, here's the thing. Uh, the Wall Street Journal, has a, our, our sister publication, has a great item uh, yesterday where they showed in 2019, 
If you bought $100 worth of stuff, you would get four bags. You would get everything on this table. In some cases, over the last five years now, some food has gone up 50%. So we're going to show you graphically. This is a lot. I this, mean, I can't even believe lot. this is what $100 would buy you, because nowadays, it'd give you about half right. of this. Exactly. So this is what you can buy in 2019. Let us show you how much stuff you've got to take out. In other words, Today, you have to take out about $37 okay. worth of stuff. So we want to take out take the out the carrots, take out the, bananas, take out the oatmeal, uh, oat, oat milk. milk. Uh, take is, that, Brian. Is there a frozen meal? Bananas. bananas. Where are the bananas? Oh, Brian oh, got here, those. Here's, here's the frozen the, meal. Oh, take right. the okay. chips. Oh, there's the frozen no meal. No more chips. That's oh, the that's, chicken. Oh, that's, that's the chicken. chicken. Put that back. Can of soda. Here's a can of soda. The frozen yeah. uh, lasagna is over there. Okay. Chocolate bar. Chocolate. The chocolate okay. bar right there. Right Where's the crackers? Did you guys take the crackers? I got the, the gallon I got of the water. Chips. Okay, gallon, gallon of water. water. That is that. now out. Brian, you're not Why helping. Your table only here. has two things. Oh, you want it all over there? Yeah, and just the crackers. to show. The crackers. Brian, take the crackers. Oh, these are the crackers. All right. No. Okay, there we go. So now right. this is what your dollar, your hundred dollars will buy. Right. So this is $100 in 2024. Mm -hmm. And can you pan over here to the little table? This is all the stuff you, you bought in 2019 for 100 bucks, but you can't get it anymore. Sorry, no carrots. Now think oh, about Alice. No when she shop, think about Alice Good shopping care. for six kids in the Brady Bunch. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, Alice <laughs> comes back with less bags right. so uh, half of the and kids, the same amount of money. Half of the kids can't eat, Brian. Exactly, probably the girls. Yep, yeah, right. $37 worth of stuff from 2019 you can't buy today. You know, on a serious note, my family grew up on the 99 cent store. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we didn't have a, a lot, my mom would go to the 99 cent store, and at that time, it's like 107 with tax per item, and she would say, hey, she had our groceries, and then we were allowed to get two things. I, I can't imagine having to pay four bucks now for some of the stuff that was once 99. Yeah. That's the whole point right. of the 99 cent store and, and, is that everything is 99 cents. And my family did the same thing. But here's the thing. You know, you think, OK, you just get tchotchkes and seasonal stuff at the 99 mm -hmm. cent store, or the dollar store. You buy groceries. There are That's a right. lot of people who go to buy their groceries at the dollar stores. Right. We always went to the commissary. Dad served yep. in the army. So mm -hmm. we. Prices were a lot cheaper there. I wonder right. if they've gone up there as well. I'm sure they have. Well, they don't have tax. All right. All right. So uh, keep That's that in mind. We, uh, right. we feel your pain when it comes butter. to inflation when you go shopping this weekend. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.